I'm very excited to be here today, guys. Um, I want to. This is more of a bit of vision casting of where we're going to go. I, I do have some thoughts. I do want to share that. I believe the Holy Spirit has given me, but I just want to uh, just sort of share from the heart of men's ministries about where we're at and where we're going to be going moving forward. We are an eclectic group of people. We truly are. Look at it. Look around. We've got a great mix of young and old. We've got all various backgrounds. We've got different opinions on things, sports or political, tastes on food. Uh, you name it, we're all wired differently. But the one common thread that we all have is Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He is risen. And as a result of that, we have that common bond. The other stuff, don't worry about. The, other, the main thing is Jesus. The main thing is, is, is the preaching of Jesus Christ, get people saved, healed, and delivered. And that really is the mission of the body of Christ. And that is our mission today. And, is, and is, our goal is to help uh, all of us be activated to lead well in our communities, in our families, in our homes, in our jobs. And I really, our passion is kingdom advancement in the name of Jesus. So we are, again, an eclectic group of, of guys. We really are all different. No different than the, the 12 disciples that Jesus Christ picked. I mean, look at those 12. You, <laughs> you had fishermen. You had a tax guy. I mean, you had a, a, a zealot. You had... A, a real potpourri of people. I mean, those guys. I mean, <laughs> though. I mean, the fit, before they knew Jesus, they were. What were they doing? I mean, they're working. They're probably getting into fights in the local, local tavern, right? I mean, look at Peter. Like Peter is your. I mean, if you ever played like any sort of recreational men's league sports, there's always that one guy that likes to fight, right? Like, and you know that was Peter. Peter was likes to fight guy because he was very passionate. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we're all the same. Like. We're no different than the disciples. You know, prior to receiving Christ, we were you know, a bunch of knuckleheads. We really, really were. We didn't know our purpose and our destiny. We didn't know our, our, uh, our whole direction that we're going to head in our lives. But God spoke. When he entered into our lives, it changed everything, right? When that happened, our destinies changed. Our families' lives changed. Our eternal home changed. And that is a massive uh, spiritual shift that's happened. When we were given the keys of the kingdom, when we took Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we were had access to things that we didn't have before. And one of them is listening to the Holy Spirit and listening to his small, still voice. Um, my wife, Janet, and I, we will go on prayer drives occasionally, and we will just want to pray about some things. Early... August, we were on Vancouver Island, and she, we were listening to some worship music. And I said, just, you know, let's just, I think we need to pray. Just listen to God's voice. So we turned off uh, the music, and as we drove down the island, we are just listening, and the, the Holy Spirit just said to, kept on saying to me, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. And I'm like, okay, I'm driving. I've got my, like, seatbelt on, like, buckle up. So I'm, in my mind, mentally, I'm going like, well, what is this about? Is, now, we had, we had gone through a very, very serious health crisis in our, in our family, with one of our family members that uh, has receded, praise God. Um, I didn't know if it was related to that. I didn't, we had just lost a 35-year-old niece to, uh, to suicide. Uh, Janet referenced that at uh, the service that we, we spoke at a few weeks ago. We didn't know what that had to do with her family, that it was not taking that well. What did it mean? And I was like really like marinating on it, like buckle up. And then I got another, uh, about on the 26th of August, uh, my friend Don Pinkham, I'm gonna ask up here uh, right now, Don and I met for coffee. So Don, why don't you come up here, buddy? So, we were sitting down in the Take Five Cafe on Shaughnessy, which I might add is fabulous coffee, I've got to tell you. Right, right, Maury? Maury and I meet every two weeks. We have, we have Tuesdays with Maury every two weeks, and we go to Take Five Coffee, and it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so Don and I were, were sitting down coffee, and I said to, to Don, I said, what's, what's God telling you these days? Like, what's God telling you these days? Now, just share with, just you share with the group what you share with me. Good morning, everyone. My name is Don. Uh, I was sitting in the coffee shop with Brad, and I'll share with you some of what I shared with Brad. Um, some months ago, 
I had a dream, and I don't get many dreams, but there was a significant event in the dream. Um, this will fit in a few minutes, but by profession, I'm a city bus driver. So I'm driving up and down the streets. I've been doing this over 30 years, so I see a lot of people. I don't get buses in my dreams, thank the Lord. <laughs> Yet in this dream, a bus from the distance was heading my way. And as I was, you know, I'm looking at the bus, you're kind of geared in on the things that are in the orbit of your life. I see the bus heading my way and I see the sign. And, and buses nowadays have modern scrolling marquees. On the front of the bus it said, end times. And then it scrolled and it said, buckle up. And it impacted me because we all live in the atmosphere of earth, but our citizenship is in heaven. One of the things that my profession has allowed me to do is be an observer of atmospheres, an observer of people, an observer of what is going on, because I see cars and people and it's my life. Um, in this world, there is a primary atmosphere currently right now. And as we're heading toward end times, those events and things, news items are going to change. But in these last several months, I've been impressed by in this world, there is an atmosphere primarily of fear, anxiety, and hostility. It is an atmosphere of the times of this season in this world which we are currently finding ourselves in. There is an alternative. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and because he lives inside you, the King of Kings lives inside you, and the King of Kings carries an atmosphere with him Therefore, I carry an atmosphere, and that atmosphere is characterized by peace. So every one of us has an opportunity to either be in the sphere of hostility, anxiety, fear. It's everywhere. Or we can be in the atmosphere of God's peace, and it's an atmosphere that goes with me everywhere I go. And when I'm consciously in the atmosphere of the peace of God, there is no trouble in my bubble because he keeps my mind, he keeps my emotions. And that's what I want to say today is the Lord extends to every one of you an opportunity to literally consciously step into that peace. And you can exist in it no matter what's going on around you. No trouble in my bubble because the Prince of Peace is keeping me. Thanks. Thank you, Donnie. Interestingly enough, um, if, if you want verification, Don had texted that to Pastor Terry prior to him and I having coffee. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it was, we're, we were on the same page. And again, Don and I have been friends for a number of years now, and it certainly was a, a really interesting discussion. Again, I am not... I don't move in the prophetic. I don't know what's coming next. I don't know what's going to happen next hour, but I, I do know this... That, Things are very, very, very challenging right now. Things are seemingly teetering on the edge on a number of fronts. Uh, militarily, economically, politically, things are a little bit choppy, to say the least. Uh, it's like, is everybody offended right now? Like, every time I watch the news, somebody's offended. Somebody's, somebody's probably offended with me that I'm up here speaking, right? So, <laughs> but... Uh, in the book of Matthew 24.10, we talk about, well, when are the end times coming? Matthew 24.10, and there will be, many will be offended. They will betray one another, and they will hate one another. And the sad part about that, that's also happening in the church, too. People have gotten offended and hurt with each other. In some cases, it's legitimate, but in a lot of cases, it, it's, as I said at the outset, we're all different people with different views and perspectives. The common thread is Jesus, and that's what we should focus on. The other stuff is peripheral. We need to focus in on that. Um, but I just have this overwhelming sense that we're entering into some real turbulent times. I don't know when. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying it's going to happen next week or next month or early next year. But I just have this overwhelming sense we're going to go into some real turbulent times. And I have this feeling that it might get a little bit choppy and difficult for a lot of us. But we shouldn't be surprised. Jesus said it was going to happen. The Bible says it's going to happen. It's in black and white. There should be no surprises there. But because, as Don said, you know, there's no trouble in my bubble because who we are, 
Like we walk in the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we have we are sons of the King. We we are we are heirs. You know, we know the Prince of Peace, and that is the the most amazing thing that we can we can really really drill in on. I worked for a number of years the Jim Patterson Group, and Jimmy always had this expression. And this is where we're going to be going on as Quest Men's Ministries. Jimmy had an expression, what you have done to get you to this point of success isn't necessarily going to be sufficient to get you where you're going to go in the future. Now, that's in a business perspective, but in a spiritual perspective, it's really, I have this overwhelming sense in my, in my gut that we really need to be more drilled down in the Word, more drilled down in prayer, and more drilled down in community and support for each other, because we're going to need each other. And that's really, really our vision is a lot more connectivity, spiritually, emotionally. I mean, we're in this together, guys. We are it. And, And I'm excited for that. We were chosen. Think about this. We were chosen, but before the foundations of the earth were cooling to be alive at this time in history, we were chosen, and that is something that God has picked each and every one of us, wherever we came from, to be part of this. Um, one thing that maybe some of you don't know is that I'm a huge, huge train buff. Now, my friend Patrick Conway, who I love, he happened to bring me a baseball cap from CP Rail, ironically, today, because I got some train analogies coming up here in a second. And so, I mean, Pat's so great, he goes to garage sales and he buys me Bachman HO trains and gives them to me, which is fantastic. So yeah, that, that's a good friend. that like, He knows me, right? <laughs> so, um, Corey, do you want to put the first slide up? Thanks. You guys can see that okay? Okay. This is the Kinsua trestle. This is in Pennsylvania. It was built early last century. It is 2,065 feet long, and its core is 310 feet tall. Don't ask me metric, please. I'm a boomer, okay? Oh, these guys there, what's feet? No. (laughs) Um, To give you a perspective, 310 feet tall, the Shaughnessy Tower in downtown Poco is 27 stories tall, which is about 270 feet. So it is taller than that. Um, that was designed for Pennsylvania Railway to, to take coal from the coal mines down to Pittsburgh to the processing plants and also to Philadelphia for shipping overseas. Next slide, please, Corey. Um, on July 21st, 2003, a windstorm blew through and wiped out one third of the trestle. Thankfully, there was nobody on the trestle. There was no trains active at the time. The trestle came tumbling down to the valley floor. Next slide, please. So you can just see all the twist, twisted wreckage, the metal just all hanging there. Like it was a massive, massive deconstruction. You can still see, I mean, it's, it's been, the debris's been cleared up, now it's been two decades, but it's, it's all been cleared up. Next slide, please. Yeah, so it was very, 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 very much a devastating high wind. Next slide, please. Hate to be going over it. That, that first step's a bit of a Lulu, to, to, right? Okay, next step, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so when they did the investigation, exactly what happened, who's here has been in or is currently in construction or has built a deck or something like that? Okay, there's several people here. Thank you. So, the, the investigators found out that the footings here, which support the metal infrastructure, these footings were not quite deep enough, and the, the bolts here... <laughs> Put them on speakerphone. Well, well, so time for some mocking. No, no. The, uh, the, the anchor bolts were not deep enough. So that when the windstorms came, first of all, over a period of time, there's natural erosion happens, but because these bolts were not anchored, the wind caused it to shake back and forth, and they started to disintegrate. They literally shifted off the footings, bringing down 900 square feet of the trestle, which is pretty significant. So it's definitely an engineering mistake. 
It was not drilled down deep enough. It was not anchored properly. It was not affixed properly. And it took out, again, 900 square feet of trestle. And, and thank the Lord there was like no train or, or individuals on it. Next slide, please, Corey. So, Matthew 7, 24, 7. Anyone who listens to my teaching and falls it is a wise, is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But... Anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And that's just a great reminder for us. We need to be anchored in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need to be listening to the small, still voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to have our footings firm. Are they? Are our footings firm? Is our anchor bolts dug down deep enough? Are we checking for erosion? Are we checking for rust? Are we checking for any sort of structural integrity being compromised? We need, gentlemen, myself speaking as the head of the class, to be checking our hearts on a regular basis, drilled into the Holy Spirit, listening to Jesus, and absolutely positively leaning in to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What I want to do, and I mentioned a couple of minutes ago when I talked about where our vision is, we want to mobilize and activate every single person here to their fullest giftings. I'm not going to be a talking head here every month. Nobody is. I want to get to the point where each and every one of you will have the ability and the comfort to be able to, mo to move in your giftings. And if that means speaking up here, you will be tapped on the shoulder. Because I believe a lot of you, young, old, have got amazing giftings and talents inspired by God that will be a blessing to everybody when you speak. So what we're doing moving forward is, for example, next month we are going to be having a series with Warren Lowers and Clay Tierney talking about uh, being godly Christian businessmen, walking in integrity, and stewardship of God's money. And I think that's really important to get it, get it from a godly man who walk the walk and talk the talk. In November, Josh Craig, who's not here today, Josh will be speaking about praying through adversity when his son was in the hospital dying and having multiple surgeries and how, as a young father, he was able to persevere under the power of the Holy Spirit. In January, I've got Bob Ray speaking on listening to God. How do you know you're listening to God? And there'll be more people that I'll be asking to, to speak forward, and uh, we've got VJ also talking about mental wellness next year, talking about some of his struggles he's had. So we, I want us to be a place of authenticity. I want this to be a place where it's safe. I want this to be a place where we can be encouraging. I want this to be a place where you come in here and you leave a changed man, not because of great muffins or, or wonderful oratory, but because the Holy Spirit changed you, the Holy Spirit changed me, and the Holy Spirit has caused us as a group to grow to, together. Does that sound good? All right, good. So what I want to do now, because my whole vision is, is to change, well, not change, sorry. What my vision is, is to have a solid safe community of prayer. So, Corey, can I get the next slide, please? So, I would like this to be the Riverside House of Prayer. <laughs> the R hop <laughs> I, And I wanted to start now at your table. I would like you guys to break into your, into your groups and just share what's on your heart. Is there something you need prayer for? Is there a family member that's doesn't know Jesus or a spouse that's wandered away? Is there, is there a health or family or financial concern? It's, it's time to be open and allow God to use the situation, to use your brothers around you to minister to each other. So we're going to do that, gentlemen. So if table leaders can just sort of you know, help steer the discussion, that would be great. And then we can, in about 20 minutes, gather back together for some closing comments. Sound good? Awesome. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you.